wish you could smell the smell of delicious fried chicken right now. I just love walking the streets when we're here. The historic center is just so beautiful. <laughs> That's the south in a bite, y'all. It only gives me time to spend alone. I can't help but wonder. Welcome to Savannah, Georgia. This is one of our favorite cities in the South and a place that we have visited several times before we hit the road to full-time RV. And it is just so romantic and historic and charming. If you've ever been to Savannah, it's pretty easy to understand why you'd fall in love. But if you haven't, don't worry, we're gonna take you along with us over the next few days, showing you what makes this city so special. We are only spending a few days here, so we're not gonna be hitting everything. There is a lot to do in the general Savannah area, including Tybee Island. There's a really cool national monument called Fort Pulaski that we visited in the past. Instead, we're gonna be sticking to the historic center and just outside where we're camping at Skidaway State Park and just kind of taking in all of the charm and history, hitting a few of the must visit destinations within the city as well. So I hope you're ready to enjoy the South with us. We came to Miss Wilkes Dining Room, arguably one of the most famous restaurants in all of Savannah. This place is an institution. It has been on so many different food shows. We've had this as a bucket list place to eat for quite a while, and I'm very excited to finally be checking it off of our list. Miss Wilkes Dining Room has been open since 1943 and has been serving lunch only Monday through Friday, starting at 11 a.m. in Savannah. And this place is popular. I think we've been waiting for at least an hour and we still have about 45 minutes more to wait before our food arrives. But I think it's going to be well worth the wait. She has won so many awards for her fried chicken and her down home Southern cooking. So today's special was like $30. We got four pieces of chicken and three sides because of COVID. They have had to adapt their style. Normally you would have gone into the dining room and there's just a few big tables. You would have sat with complete strangers. And so it was really a unique experience because you got to meet new people as you were sharing such an incredible meal. The, the food was the highlight of coming, but the connections that you made over the table were, I think is what really made it such a special experience. Everything is to go right now because of the pandemic. So we're gonna be getting a box of food and, and they have tables set up all outside. We did get a really cute little porch that we're gonna be eating on. So I'm not mad about that because it is very Savannah, but I would have loved to kind of have that experience as well. I am ready for food. <laughs> it smells so good. We're right above the kitchen. It's just a lot. I wish you could smell the smell of delicious fried chicken right now. Yeah. We got a feast. We didn't order the rice, but we got it. And it's delicious. Definitely yes to that one. The mac and cheese. Everything looks so good. Can we just talk about the crispness of this fried chicken, please? Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> That's the south in a bite, y'all. Mm. Wow. The crunch. The crunch is real. Mm. Honestly, it's probably the best fried chicken I've ever had. You can line up and start ordering at 10.30. You won't get your food until 11, because that's when they formally open, but the line will have already started. It was 12.40 when they ran out of food and they stopped serving people, so make sure you are here early. And it says it's for one person and there's four pieces of chicken, but our bag has close to 20 pieces of chicken in it, no joke and they added in all these extra sides. Supposedly, the longer you wait, the more generous they are with what they give you. So we ended up with four extra sides of food. Seriously? Four extra sides. Whoa. <laughs> On top of the three we got and all of this chicken, I don't know where it's gonna go. In my belly. <laughs> collard greens are so good. I'm not the biggest collard fan. We are from the South, so we're used to them. I, I eat them, but- I love them but these are good. And as if this wasn't indulgent enough, we're gonna finish this off with some banana pudding. Probably the most Southern dish for dessert you could have. I used to be a huge fan of banana pudding. It was my birthday cake every year from being like a child until I was 21. But then when we started kind of cleaning up our diet and paying more attention to what goes into our food and the ingredients in our food, I stopped eating banana pudding. If you guys didn't know Nello wafers and banana flavored pudding is not exactly the healthiest thing for you. But you know what? We're bending our rules and I'm gonna love it. 
Mm. Is yep. it good? Yep, I love it. <laughs> I just love walking the streets when we're here. The historic center is just so beautiful. There are trolleys that you can take that will give you an in-depth history of the area through all of the historic spots, but we really like walking. It's just a different vibe. You get to be right next door to all of these massive mansions that line the 22 squares and parks that can be found in the historic center because they are beautiful. Savannah was founded in 1733 by James Oglethorpe, who designed the town to be built in a series of grids around 24 public squares and parks, 22 of which can still be visited today. Just around the corner from Miss Wilkes' dining room is Forsyth Park, which is one of the iconic, most photographed spots in the city of Savannah. And it's also just a beautiful park to come enjoy and spend a gorgeous day like today outside. There's playgrounds for kids, they have a, a little bar, restaurant, and then all of the homes that line the park are just beautiful as well. From the 1800s, there's some massive mansions that have been turned into Airbnbs and hotels. We ended up staying in an Airbnb in one of those, and it was really, really cool. In the very top of it, the owner took us around and it was a whole ballroom on the top floor. The historic part of Savannah is open container, so you can get drinks from any of the bars or restaurants, throw them in a to-go cup, and walk around wherever you want, and no one's gonna hassle you. Don't think that's what we're gonna do right now. This fine establishment is the only thing that's open on three o'clock on Monday afternoon. The original Pinky Masters. We've actually been here before. I forgot how cool of a bar that is. Very divey, very unique. If you can, and you're looking for a drink, stop in there. It is a very fun place. But we're gonna walk around the rest of the historic district and try and take, take in what we can with the little time we have left. You wanna spend a whole day in this area, for sure. There's so many different plazas and squares and just meandering the streets. It feels like time has flown by like this. I think eating like six pieces of chicken and a ton of sides and putting a beer on top of it has finally caught up to me. I feel very heavy. The next day, we headed back into town to explore more of the historic district, starting with River Street, one of the most popular stops for visitors. Savannah was a major port city throughout the late 1700s and 1800s, holding the title as one of the world's largest exporters of cotton making River Street, which runs along the Savannah River, an important industrial hub for the city. Much of the old industrial buildings that lined the riverfront sat vacant for years until developers in the 1970s converted the space into shops, bars, restaurants, and unique hotels. The Plant Riverside District, the newest development off River Street, is home to one of the coolest hotels we've been in. The JW Marriott had some of the world's largest natural geodes on display, as well as ancient artifacts from extinct animals and crazy decorations across the ceiling. It honestly felt like we were walking in a contemporary museum and is well worth a stop in. After our walk, we headed to the Bamboo Tiki Room above Sari Charlie's Oyster Bar for some classic tiki drinks and super fun tropical vibes before we filled up on tasty dumplings and noodle bowls from Flying Monk Noodle Bar. Our final stop for the night was one of Savannah's many Prohibition-themed bars, which not only had great drinks, but also gave some super interesting history about the Prohibition era. lovely going for a hike first thing in the morning just kind of 
Get your body moving, feel that sunshine. Today is a beautiful day. We're staying at Skidaway State Park, which is about 25, 30 minutes from the historic center of Savannah. And it's been a really lovely stay. There's as many as like 13 miles of trails if you really want it. We just did the short one mile round trip trail, but we do have to leave today. So we didn't do the full trail system. I'm gonna start cooking breakfast while Dennis takes a quick shower. And then we are out of here, heading on to visit Dennis's family in Georgia. We're very excited. We haven't seen them in a very long time. So it'll be lovely to spend some time with them. And then in just a few short days, we'll be back in Florida for the, the holidays, which is so exciting. But we hope you enjoyed getting to explore a little bit of the Savannah area with us. We know there is so much more we could have done. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments your favorite part. But thanks for traveling with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Ooh, lucky Susan. <laughs> it is. Give me a spin. Well, let me give you a non eaten one. <laughs> wow. I've already eaten that one. And they're making all this in house, right? We don't really sure. know. Sure. We don't really know, but. Sure, they are. Anyway. Whatever you need to tell yourself. You're going to have to roll me out of here. <laughs> <laughs>